class. So I thought I'd do a video talking about how you use gesture drawing in the process of doing uh, an illustration. So I recently did a poster. That's why I was thinking about it because uh, we're having an event at the school. So I did this, this pencil drawing of the poster over uh, a printout of text layout and some other art that's going to be used that goes in over top of this. Uh, and there was a, a very loose gesture, which you've seen done here, partially in the orange. And then continuing with the orange, I did a little bit of building up uh, the anatomy and the, the armor and this details here. And then I went in pencil and did the rest. But like, you see very little orange in here because for the gesture for the pile of books, all I needed was the shape of this. So there's just an orange right there. And then this thing had more detail in it. I came to that figure later, so she wasn't an orange. Superman here, though, you can kind of see some of the gesture in him. And thinking about the cape. Um, and then I took this pencil, I, t I dropped out the blues and the oranges entirely from, from the printout and printed out large, in this case actually traditionally large, 11 by 17 thick, uh, paper here, and uh, inked it. And this is for the comic salon, BD Montreal. Uh, it's a new little mini festival thing that I'm going to try to hold at the school I work at, um, maybe on a regular basis, but we're doing it at least once. May 1st, sorry, yes, May 1st, May 2nd, we have a free comic book day event. May 1st, we're doing the comic salon in BD Montreal. Um, it's going to be kind of a gathering. There'll be panels, there'll be a comic jam, there'll be merch tables where we can sell our books. And uh, everyone is welcome to come check it out to comics and talk about making comics. It's kind of like, I had an idea for, uh, for a while now of having a gathering somewhere between a comic festival and an old school comic convention where there was actual uh, opportunity for, for professionals to talk to each other and share ideas. Um, and this is at a school, so we have comic classes. I'm teaching uh, full time starting uh, in May. I'll be teaching two comics classes at Sin Studio, um, making comics and making comics advanced. And uh, the new curriculum for the next semester uh, that I've written is up on the site at sinstudio.ca. So if you want to check that out and come uh, learn comics this summer with me. Um, so but this is from something from Dynamic Drawing, the gesture drawing thing. And uh, that's another course I do at Sin for a while now. And for it, typically when you're doing a dynamic drawing, uh, gesture, we're working with moving models, but in general gesture drawing is, is the idea of capturing movement, even when you're looking at a static model. So this is a sheet I give out just so that people have a visual reference for different styles of drawing and what makes gesture, gesture drawing. So this is a contour, ad hoc figure, a constructive and figurative study are observed. So gesture drawing is a very expressive way of really quickly getting down uh, the sense of a figure and its internal, even if it's a standing pose, its internal sense of movement. This is from uh, uh, Nicolaides' uh, book, an example of his. Um, and, as opposed to contour, where you're worried about the edges of things, also with figurative, there's a lot of contour study and figurative work. Uh, and, in, and in anatomical and constructive, you're trying to get the forms of things right. And there's a lot of worry about some degree of more accuracy with these. Gesture is, is a, a low priority, so accuracy is not important for gesture. Uh, what's important is expressiveness and capturing that sense of motion. Uh, so that's why you see these swirling things. And you'll notice that the lines are quite frequently pretty long. These are actually shorter than what I encourage in some cases. Uh, but you want a fair range, but le leaning towards long, expressive, continuous lines. And dynamic drawing, I get people to try to draw with con almost continuously. Like, don't lift your pencil from the paper if you can help it. Um, but just move through the forms and try to find your way through them and think about the movement and the feeling and the, 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 the body language of the pose. So, and, you know, normally you do these with a, a static pose, but I like to make up the challenge a bit in dynamic drawing, because I find it actually makes it learn this, learning this easier. You don't have the privilege of taking your time trying to get something right when the model is moving. So normally we have a model in the room or I play video very large on the wall. So this is one of my favorite videos to suggest as practice, Tai Chi, because it's, it's intrinsically slowed down. And on YouTube, if you're on a browser, you can, you can slow down the video now too, even more. But some movement is good. And you're forced because they're, the subject is moving to move pretty quickly yourself. And I tell people to observe the subject for a bit 
and kind of get into the rhythm of their movements and see if there's any patterns that you can read. As you do that, start moving your, your pencil. But normally we would do this on a really large piece of paper and I'm getting people to move their whole arms. Uh, but you can do it smaller for sketchbooks. I just really encourage like that larger scale for initially learning how to do it. Um, for the smaller scale, you're using more your hand and your wrist than your whole arm when you're, when you're doing it bigger. And you're, you want to start moving before you start drawing as you observe the subject and think about where they are in space. And kind of go with the changes if you can. Um, but you can also choose to pick just a thing that you're going to use. And that's kind of a gesture already done. So I'm going to go on to the next one. And I don't worry as much about the heads or feet. I don't even do any hands or feet, really. And sometimes I leave them headless. And you want to start with the core. The gesture is something you see a lot of in animation because it's critical to understanding how things move in order to animate the moving. That includes people, of course, not just things. So, it usually takes a class which people to get comfortable doing this. Some folks who are a little bit more stuck in their ways takes longer to let go. You're not trying to spend too long doing them. That's hard for folks if they want to perfect. Um, and you're not looking at edges, which I think we're intrinsically inclined to do. I think we're wired to look for edges. So it's really hard to get away uh, from doing contour drawing uh, or trying to construct it out of pieces, especially if you've learned how to like do, this is a, a chest and these are hips and here's a leg, you know, in building a drawing out of these segmented pieces. You see that's very common. And unfortunately some people get into building the pieces out of like really generified segments like that. And that can kind of work, but a lot of folks have a hard time getting from the, the, the long oval to what is actually a thigh and so on. So and all of this isn't very good. It's good when you're trying to construct something and you don't have reference, but it's not very good when you are trying to draw from study. It's too slow, uh, especially a moving subject. But in general, a subject, it's, this is a very tedious way of doing things. And you, want, you won't get the, the energy of the pose as much if you don't start with this energy. If you're trying to draw with dy dynamic energy in your art, in general, uh, have any, any kind of sense of power or force to it or, or kinet kinetic potential or actual activity, it's, or just even having lines that are expressive and, and, and sinuous and kind of have that, that range, if, even if you don't do it all the time, to have that capacity. Um, you have to understand that the energy in the lines is going to come from you. And the more you do that, the more semi-controlled your gesture will be, but then the actual speed of moving through the form and having all these continuous movements is what will give the figure something to, to hang the rest of what you do on that has energy. And, and in fact, some of these lines might even prove to be useful. So let's pause this video. And this is how I would then go on to apply these. Different ways, we could go constructive, but I kind of like a combination of contour and constructive. I kind of hybridize these two. And elements is basically integrate these three. So I would then think about what's the actual shape of his chest and the shirt, maybe even more so important, but I want to think about the chest a bit because it tells me why the wrinkles are happening. And I'm going to still draw it at some speed because um, I don't want to get into the urge to be overly precise too soon. Uh, and what will make... People always are concerned about using reference, be it a video or film, uh, and I find that amusing because they wouldn't be as concerned if there was a real person in the room they were drawing, but that's reference. All reference. There's a difference between using video and film in that it's flattened out for you, uh, and I think that that helps you know, we have bifocal vision, we don't really actually see things nice and flattened out. Um, 
when you draw from life, you're also processing how to interpret uh, the three-dimensional bifocal image information you receive. Whereas when I'm drawing from video or this, a uh, little of that work has been done for me. And having a bit of speed also helps keep some element of gesture in the line. Keep the sense of movement in general. So I could not have the video anywhere near me and have done a bunch of these in a class and then later on just from memory attempt to play with you know, I would probably try to do one drawing where I had done the contours so I know what the person's clothes look like. But I can then play with he has one hand up? Looks like he's got one hand up. I know a little Tai Chi, so I'm able to a fake imagine what he might have been doing, although I doubt this is actually accurate. But that's not always so important. So in general, there are a lot of reasons why accurate aren't important. One, it slows you down, makes your work stiff. Two, uh, people aren't walking around with rulers checking your work. No one's looking for accuracy. They're looking for the impression of accuracy. They want you to make it look good. <laughs> Not perfect. So, really accurate, realistic, but interesting art isn't uh, in any way perfect. It's actually better than expressive, um, I find, personally. It tends to be kind of cold and deadened when it's too worried about being accurate. So there's me using a gesture, uh, kind of a mix of contour and a bit of construction. You can use just constructional so that would be like this with the spine and the hips and torso. Notice I did the most important thing first. So that's hierarchy. We want to make sure that you always focus on the core of the form and then you work your way out. Um, now, after years of drawing figures, I've kind of developed my own key shapes or silhouettes for the arms and things like that. So rather than drawing a do or even a worse, a, a box like that, um, or a tapering tube, I actually have drawn enough arms from life art that I kind of know what the silhouettes look like, and that helps. Uh, all the good and very feminine arms. Essentially, I'm, I think it looks like I'm making this figure a woman, uh, especially the long so here it feels more feminine. Um, the silhouette thing, I understand as well. So maybe what I'm doing here is figurative drawing, but with a bit of constructive, out of habit. So yeah, I mean, if you were doing just constructive, you'd be like, there's a tube here, and a this, and a ball for the... But I find a lot of this, ultimately, very limited in use. You want to get to the point where you're just drawing familiar silhouettes that you've learned from life study um, to get a nice figurative drawing as an end result. You're adding an extra step. Uh, the, the constructive methods quick little stick figure gesture uh, are really good if the character you're going to draw is built out of parts like that. In other words, if they're a cartoon. A little funny hat. I notice noodle arms are very popular these days certainly easy to draw. Yep. 
But if you're drawing realistic people, then uh, you really want to be thinking more about figurative silhouette, contours, uh, studies. Those are all important to do when you're working with life models as well. But begin your studies with a gesture uh, to get that expressive movement in the first stages. That's how you use gesture drawing.